Welcome back to the Cheapo Spotlight. It is Cheapo time again in the nation. Mm, my favorite time of day. All right, in the spotlight today, we are looking at the all new Yu Yigao UA8888 Smart Auto Sensing Digital Multimeter. Let's take a look. Now we have seen a lot of these so-called smart meters that aren't really that smart. Or if they're smart, they're utterly slow. Let's hope this one's different. The Yui Gao is your basic no frills smart auto multimeter. And in the box, plain Jane Brown box that chips in, nothing too uh, funky spanky. Let's open it up and what do we get? Oh my goodness, we get a set of leads. A standard generic style we are seeing on basically all the cheapos these days. And as well, you do get, oh, it's not in the box. It's in my hands. Yes, the little smart auto digital multimeter operating manual. This is a 6,000 count, three times per second sampling rate multimeter. So um, not so bad as far as basic specs go. It does have a, a backlight and we're going to check it all out. The little meter manual that it comes with, basically a few pages. Um, the typeset is really crappy for some reason, um, very hard to read. But anyway, it is better than nothing. Now at first glance, when you look at this multimeter, if you are familiar with multimeters, you will notice that there is something missing. Come on, think about it, think about it. Yes, it is missing the standard range selector switch, let's call it schema. Those symbols that we see on most multimeters are void from this unit. Now you might ask why, oh why, did they do that? And that's because they're calling this a smart auto digital multimeter. Well, mm -mm, okay, but then why this interesting selector switch dial if it really has no use? Basically, you have your off and your on. That's it, that's all. Everything else is just eh, frivolity. It doesn't make any sense, but that's what they chose to do. They stuck with the traditional rotary style selector switch and negated the functionality. Weird. I mean, is that even legal? Badges! Badges! Legal, legal, stinking badges! So right away we know that this is a meter with a slightly different outlook. Um, let's turn it on. Here we go. And bada boom, bada bing, bada bang. It is on. We see that quick LED display at the top letting us know we are good to go. And we are now in smart mode. Now remember, this only does capacitance resistance continuity and that is it let's not forget the high current but it does not do milliamps uh-uh no milliamps at all so uh so when you turn it on for so the first sad. time you are greeted with these four single bars basically letting you know that you are in smart mode feeling smart i'm feeling super smart super super smart not really we're gonna start things off with our voltage reference just see how accurate the little IC is and the Yui Gao. And I'm pulling out the leads. And once again, yeah, these are the standard test leads. Now, the one thing that's a little bit different is, yeah, look at those uh, banana style plugs. Really short, uh, eh, not liking it. Anyway, stick them inside and away we go. Okay, now this is supposed to be a smart multimeter. Let's see how smart it is and accurate at the same time. Should be looking at 250 millivolts, 250. You ready? You ready? Here we go. And we are in kilo ohms for some reason. Okay, so what's happening here is the fact that the millivolt range is too low for this smart meter. Basically, it doesn't sense what it is that's trying to get measured. So, and that's too bad. Now, I think we do have a manual override. Let's take a look. And that is a negative, we don't. So, alrighty, it is a fail in the millivolt side of things. Let's put it over to the voltage side. Should be looking at 2.50 volts, and that is a go. So, yeah, interesting. I thought I had read, I guess it was another multimeter, but I thought this one also had a manual override and uh no not the case the manual here uh in dc voltage range you can see the input sensitivity is 0.5 volts 
so half of a volt about 500 millivolts before this baby kicks in so yeah there you go let's take a look at that backlight shall we pull down on the backlight button and it does illuminate um so fairly consistent i don't really see any bleeding per se all in all not a bad looking backlight now how long is this going to stay on for probably not too long let's find out yeah there you go about 15 20 seconds that's it that's all why oh why they just don't leave the backlight timeout up to the end user i will never understand and there will be no diode mode because this multimeter does not do diode as well ah depressing all right does have a claim to fame of 10 millifarad in the capacitance range so let's put this smart auto ranging meter to the test and let's see how well it does okay i'm not touching anything last thing we measured was the voltage we're gonna see what happens put it straight hopefully into capacitance mode here we go and i'm not sure what the heck that was about but um it seems to be in resistance mode at this point so aha uh -huh. We can see that this meter is perhaps not quite so smart as it wants us to believe. So we're going to actually have to tell it to go into capacitance mode. Here we go. Come on. Capacitance mode. It's resistance. And we are in capacitance. So a couple of button clicks and we are now there. So right away off the get-go kind of takes away a bit of that intelligence, doesn't it? Uh -huh. All right, here we go. 10 millifarad. 10,000 microfarad cap. This is the range that this is supposedly capable of. I have not tried this yet. Let's go. All right, we have that visual indicator telling us that it is thinking. It is slow, though. We're still in microfarad mode. Okay, now into millifarad. 9.679 millifarad so uh not bad now it does have your standard touch holes can i ah! see how these touch holes really suck the big one um let's just double check that i'm pretty sure it is close it's gonna short out the capacitor here Bring up Mr. X Tech. Yeah, so fairly close, 9.7 showing up on the X Tech. Okay, we're gonna try the smart functionality again. Let's turn it back on. And we are going to try resistance. Now, this does boast a 60 mega ohm maximum resistance value, which isn't too shabby. Let's start off here. We have a uh, 22 mega ohm resistor. Here we go. Wow. So it took a while to get there. Um, eventually it found it, but that was a little on the long side for my liking. Let's just try that one more time. Here we go. Well, that was better. Okay. Maybe it's found itself in resistance range. Um, this is a 0.5 ohm, 5%. And we are below that threshold, so the continuity feature is actually kicking in. But it is getting us there around 0.5 ohm. Uh, let's try rallying up the leads, see if we have any resistance on these leads. Yeah, it looks pretty good. Now, just for the heck of it, we will try a 100 mega ohm. 1% tolerant Vichy resistor. Who knows? You never know unless you try, right? You never know. You never know. Here we go. We're going to get an OL or is it going to give us a 100 mega ohm? Or is it going to give us anything? Earth calling you, you go. Earth calling you, you go. And then over. Hmm. Wow. And no OL, no out of range, over limit, what have you. Nada, just for 
dead zones. Okay, well, so much for that. Next up, we're gonna check AC volts. This is capable of 500 volts DC and 500 AC. Here in Canada, the household mains are 120 volts or so. Remember, this is automatic. Here we go. And yeah, 120 volts, that looks good. Okay, it did look good. That looks interesting. Um, there we go. Okay, perhaps the leads were not in tight enough. And as you can see there at the top now, it is giving us the uh, true RMS AC indicator. Of course, what would a cheapo be without NCV? And yes, the UEGAO has NCV. All right, we're gonna put it in NCV mode simply by holding down on that NCV button. And you can tell we have EF coming up. And here we go. So I've got it right up against the power bar and I'm not getting a whole lot of sensitivity, which is interesting. Let's just switch this around a bit, perhaps. So unlike some meters, which would be going through the roof at this point, um, oh, 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 there we are. It's definitely getting it off of this uh, transformer here. Um, not so much from the power bar. But definitely it's working there. Okay. Interesting. I don't know. I guess that's a continuity mode is next. And I understand you guys love it almost as much as I do. Awesome. All right. Starting off with the default stock probes. Here we go. Three, two, one. Oh my God, that is really painful. So you can see if I do this, it just is not gonna latch at all. But a two second, three second delay and it finally latches, making this pretty well useless. Pro Masters, baby. Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. If anything can make this meter come alive in continuity mode, it's these guys. Three, two, one. Oh. Wow, it's even worse. How is that possible? Oh my God, I'm not even gonna do this anymore. This is torture, torture. Continuity is a fail. Ugh. Maximum threshold loudness in continuity mode is 72.4 dBA. Too bad there's 72.4 reasons why you don't wanna use this meter in continuity mode. Next up is high voltage mode. That's right, we're gonna try and knock the socks right off of this Yu Yi Gao. Here we go, 500 plus volts coming your way. Three, two, one. And we are getting that high voltage indicator. Um, we're gonna lower it down now. All right, we did have that audible high voltage indicator. Try it one more time. There we go seems to have survived good stuff size wise this is a pretty small multimeter um basically on par with the uh, let's say the winnipex et8101 um yeah so um you know a little chunky perhaps but overall definitely uh easy to take out on the road um good size Next up, we're going to do a quick voltage test between the Winapex ET8103 and the UEGAO UA Quadruple 8. All right, sitting at 0.6 volts. You can see they are in agreement, 0.643, both ways round. By the way, I'm utilizing the Minleaf power supply. Uh, this was sent out to me, courtesy of Minleaf. And I'm going to be doing a review on this one uh, shortly. It's a... Uh, 30 volt, 10 amp power supply. So stay tuned for that. Okay, without further ado, here we go. Taking it up, 0.7 volts, all the way up to 2.6. And 2.69 for the Win Apex, 2.682 for the Yuigao, up, up and away, up to 4.8 volts, 4.819, 4.813, fairly close. Higher and higher. Let's take it up to a whopping 
10.7 volts. 10.8 for the Win Apex, 10.8 for the Yuyagao. So wow, they are really neck and neck up and away again. We're gonna take it up to, oh, 19.7 volts. And look at that, still spot on close. 19.72 versus 19.71 for the Yuigo. Okay, let's max this puppy out. 29.3 volts, according to the Minleaf. 29.3 for the Win Apex. 29.3 for the Yuigo. So, hey, spot on. Very close, and you know, really almost, I'm gonna say too close to call. Um, what do you think of that display, guys? I really have to say I like it. It's um, pretty clear and uh, very vibrant, all things considered. Actually preferring the display on this guy uh, to the Win Apex. Win Apex is a little bit larger, but it's also a little bit chunkier. And um, eh, not as crazy about the font, surprisingly. Um, let's just, now none of these meters has a bar graph, unfortunately, but let's just try playing with that voltage a little bit. Um, Speed-wise, do we see any sort of a difference? Honestly, it is just too close to call. I'd say it's pretty well neck and neck. Next up, it is teardown time. We do have pretty simple access to that battery. Take out one Phillips, and that is going into a nice threaded insert, as you can see. And that's where that 9-volt battery goes. Now, if we take out the battery, we can see it's in there just by one of those standard uh, connectors. Not a big fan of these. They tend to be a kind of a pain, and they wear out over time. But uh, alrighty, let's go further. So we've got one, two, three, four screws to take it off. And just like that, easy come, easy breezy. And let's just get that 9 volt connector out of there. Away we go. So let's start off with the reverse side of the chassis. And as I always say, no damn shielding. Well, you know. One of these days, one of these days, I'm gonna be so surprised. I'm telling you, when that happens, when that happens, when I find a cheapo multimeter, I open it up and it's got shielding, there's gonna be a huge giveaway that day. Believe you me, so, oh, let's hope. Fingers crossed, fingers crossed. One thing I'll point out, as you can see here on the reverse chassis, we do have these um, protrusions coming out. And then what that does, that helps keep the input jacks solidly in place. So that's always a good thing to see. Speaking of input jacks, there they are in all their naked glory. It is that kind of really thin, cheap metal style filament. Um, and they're in there surrounded by those plastic housing. It's okay. Um, you know, I see a lot of flux below, below that. Um, so, yeah, kind of so-so. Moving over to the high current side, what do we see? Not a ceramic, no, we see a pigtail style glass fuse. Ah, why, oh why? So if you blow this baby, yeah, you're gonna have to pull out the soldering gun and replace it. Kind of annoying. This is uh, rated 250 volts, 10 amps. But once again, it is soldered directly into that PCB. Ugh, crazy. Also, we have a big, big current shunt um, on that uh, current side as well. On the voltage side, we have one lonely PTC and three 5 mega ohm resistors. Over here, we have an AQV259A Panasonic solid state relay. That is what is switching those ranges on the fly. Main IC is Cobb, but over here we have a T24C02A EEP ROM, so there's a good chance that that is a dream tech. At the top here, we have the LED, and if you can see, this is the NCV non contact voltage. It is actually quite a long filament, and it is going directly into the housing uh, of the, the canopy. So, actually, sometimes you get a lot of these cheapos, and what you see is this sort of protrusion but inside there's not a darn thing. Well, at least on the UE guy, here we actually have a antenna-like uh, protrusion coming out for the NCV, so that's always a good thing. Now you can see, I'm just lifting it up ever so gently with my uh, screwdriver, and you can see it is really poorly soldered. So I'll probably touch that up accordingly. But um, yeah, at least it is coming out into closing the thoughts on the Yui Gao UA8888. Well, what can I say? Eh, I'm not a big fan. No, unfortunately, this smart technology, or so they call it, just doesn't seem that smart to me. Uh, I do find things really slow and, generally speaking, not very usable. 
The Rode selector switch is really nothing more than a gag. It really serves no purpose. All it needs is an on off. I think it's good. And it's not that smart because if you want capacitance, well, guess what? You gotta hit the capacitance button. And when it comes to the other Rangers, just kind of slow. This is one of those niche style multimeters. And hey, I don't want it to be part of my niche. Don't even get me started on that input protection. What were they thinking? Pig, pig, pig? Pigtail fuse? No, 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 no. Wrong, wrong, wrong. Why couldn't you just use a simple damn glass fuse at the very least? Anyway, long story short, it's a no-go. The Yui Gao U8 Quadruple 8 gets a dismal 1.5 out of 5 stars. Thanks for watching this review, everybody. Hey, don't forget, we're almost at 1,000 subs. As soon as we hit that magic number, I'm going to be doing that draw. So if you haven't watched the video, check it out. You can win this BT Meter BT770S. Just check out the review, subscribe, and leave a comment in the BT Meter BT770S comment section. And hey, that's for the first draw. Second prize draw gets this awesome set of Japanese precision screwdrivers. You can't go wrong. Hey, everybody. Thanks for watching. Till the next time, keep on testing.